Hi, I'm Edwin Ryerson, and this is the AMS Show. Today we have Aspen Middle School's librarian, Haley Larson. Welcome, Haley. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Haley, I understand you are new to Aspen. How do you like it? Um, I mean, honestly, what's not to like about Aspen? It's beautiful. Um, I'm from the Midwest. I'm from Iowa. I grew up in Iowa. And so it's been a big change in a lot of ways, scenery-wise especially. I grew up surrounded by farm fields. But, yeah, I love Aspen. Beautiful. Yeah. What, did you, what made you decide to become a librarian? Um, so the story, that's kind of a whole story because I would not have, when I was your age and even much later than that, I would not have expected to become a librarian. I always loved libraries and have always been a big reader and user of libraries. But I went to school thinking I was going, went to college thinking I was going to become a PE teacher and then realized very quickly I couldn't be a PE teacher, didn't want to be a PE teacher. Um, so I transitioned into a program where I studied um, nonprofits and like the public sector. So my degree was basically in how to run a nonprofit or something in, from like a business lens almost. So I studied a lot of that and I did some internships with environmental nonprofits and did some lobbying in Missouri for different environmental things. And then I got a job working for the St. Louis County Library System, which is a public library system, not a school system. And I just like, fell in love with the work I did yeah. there. So here I am as a librarian. Yeah. So similarly, like, where did you get your training? Yeah. So I grew up in Iowa, like I said, and graduated from high school there and then moved to St. Louis, Missouri to, honestly, I went to college initially to play soccer and then figured out what I wanted to do once I got there. So I graduated from the University of Missouri in St. Louis with my degree in public administration and nonprofit administration and public policy, which don't seem like they're related to libraries, but we did work with libraries through there. What is your main sport? <laughs> so, like I said, I went to college to play soccer. Um, so I played college soccer and, I mean, I played every sport up until college and then I had to choose and played college soccer and then got injured actually um, with my seventh concussion. Mm. So I st <laughs> so I stopped playing soccer halfway through college and was a soccer coach. So soccer is my big sport, but I also played basketball, ran track, all those fun things. What do you do in your position at the library? So I, th I could probably talk for a really long time about what we do in libraries now because I think anyone who isn't in a library might have this kind of outdated idea of what we do in the library, right? Like we check out books, which of course we still do. I spend a lot, lot of time checking out books and a lot of time sh reshelving them, yeah. which is a good thing because that means kids are checking yeah. them out, right? But we also, so my role specifically at our school is I'm the Chromebook manager. Um, that's the name I've given myself. So I do anything related to Chromebooks, because all of you have one. Yeah. So 400 and something kids are coming to me at any given time, um, not all at the same time, yeah. but with any issues you guys have with your Chromebooks. So that's a job in and of itself, but I'm also doing the collection development for the library, so getting new books, um, finding homes for our old books that we don't need anymore, and then trying to work with teachers, like how we can integrate what we have in the library with what you guys are doing in class. Yeah. Um, what are some of the hot new books for middle school kids? Yeah, so I'm sure you've read some of the series maybe a long time ago, but uh, Rick Riordan books are still very popular. I think his first series came out like a decade ago or something like that. But um, Rick Riordan has his series, multiple series actually. The newest one is Trials of Apollo, but now Rick Riordan is also um, using his platform to boost other authors. So we have a new one, a new book that just came out called Arusha something. Um, and that's another author that Rick Riordan is, you know, promoting, promoting. Thank you. And a new one is going to be coming out soon where Rick Riordan is promoting an author who is whose characters are based in African mythology, because that's really Rick Riordan's thing, you know, is mythology, like basing his characters off of gods and, you know, ancient mythology. And so it was, you know, Roman and Greek, and it's moving kind of into Egyptian and African mythology, which is 
really excellent because it's a diverse range of things for kids to re read about. Um, but another big one is the Unwanted series, Unwanted and Unwanted's Quest. The fifth graders are just pulling those off the shelves right now. And those are fantasy. Fantasy is really popular um, through fifth through eighth grade fantasy books. So that's really what those ones are. And then the third one, I would say, is our graphic novels are also always flying off the shelf. So Raina, I always get her last name wrong, the author Raina Telgemeier. I don't know if you've read any of her books. I don't graphic know. novels, um, mostly. But they're basically stories of kids in middle, like young kids in elementary school, middle school. Some of them are a little later than that. And kind of just like the trials and tribulations of being a kid. And so those ones are really popular. And they're also really quick reads. So they're good ones for kids. You know, if you forget a book yeah. for SSR or something, and you can come down and get one of those. So those are really popular. But another thing that we're working on in the library at our school is to bring in more to diversify our collection and what I that what I mean by that is bringing in books with diverse characters written by diverse authors because as we know our Hispanic Latino population is growing at AMS and so it's feel, it's really important for me to bring in books that where those students can see themselves in the books right so we're bringing in books by Latino authors, books that are like relevant, um, and still really well-written books. So that's something that I've, I'm working hard on to like curate a collection around that. And then also bringing in updated nonfiction because you, know, you can have a nonfiction book about sharks from 1970 or something that might be, the information hasn't changed, but the pictures are in black and white or something. So mm. trying to bring in relevant nonfiction, especially um, something that, I mean, that we all should care about, but that your age group specifically is climate issues. So yeah. bringing in books about that and stuff like that. But I could go on all day about those. I won't, I won't force yeah. you to listen to that. Does the library have books in Spanish for kids? Yeah, so we do have books in Spanish, and it's also something that is really important to me because our English language learning population is growing at school, and having books available to them that aren't just, that aren't like they, so they don't just have a couple options. So mm -hmm. the really popular books in English, also getting them in Spanish so that those students can also be reading what is really popular. And we also have a lot of kids at our school, a lot of our English speaking kids that are learning Spanish. And so it's nice to have those books for those students as well. Um, is there a student reading club at the school? Yeah, so we actually just had our first meeting today in, for the seventh and eighth grade book club. So we have a fifth and sixth book club and a seventh and eighth grade book club, which met today at lunch. I think there were about 15 boys and girls in there. And we decided on Children of Blood and Bone, which is actually more of a teen novel, but it's a it's set in West Africa, and it's a fantasy th kind of thriller type book, but it also touches on a lot of really important social issues in a way that kids can relate yeah. to. So I'm really excited that they chose that book, and we'll meet with the fifth and sixth graders next week, and they will decide. And that's how they decide. The kids vote mm -hmm. on the book that they want. Um, what will you be reading and how do you select the book? Or what, what are other books you'll be reading and how do you select them? Sure, so I feel like my job as a librarian, and I also work closely with Caroline at school to do this, is we want to give you guys the agency to pick books, but we want to make sure that we're giving you, you know, parameters, yeah. like, like six choices, so that it's yeah. not just any old thing out of the library. So some. The way that I went about today deciding what I was going to show kids um, to choose from was things that are really high interest, so kids want to read about them. And I know with this group specifically that I was with today, fantasy and sci-fi are big. So we did we picked based on that, but also trying to bring in like diverse stories. So the one we ended up choosing, like I said, is set in West Africa with African characters, but we also had books with LGBTQ characters to choose from, and also stories 
about students dealing with depression and like other forms of mental illness. So just trying to bring in things for kids to vote on that are relatable, like high interest, and also just combining diverse characters. And how has the role of the library changed over the over time? Yeah, so um, the library and has changed a lot even since I've been working in libraries. And so it's changed a lot in since I was a middle schooler, especially, right? So libraries are not only places for books now, right? I don't think they ever were, but I think that's kind of the idea that people have, is that libraries were just like where you go to check out books, which certainly kids are still using the library to check out books, but something that we're also doing is, like I said, I'm the Chromebook manager, so we're doing a lot of the technology piece and how you integrate technology into the classroom and working with teachers on that. So another big thing that we do in our school library is like collaborating with teachers mm. and trying to collaborate with teachers. So that's um, kind of a short, like a bridged version of how they've changed. So are there any future plans for the library? Yes, very glad that you asked about this. Um, and you, you've probably seen some of the plans, but um, our innovation teacher and I, Adam Good, and some other teachers at school and some we got student input and community input on how we want to modernize the AMS library because it's a wonderful library. It's like the most beautiful place in the school probably in terms of like we have a really awesome view. Um, but we it's a little bit outdated in terms of furniture and just what we offer there. So some you you've said you've seen our plan and it's very and we did get student input on that, which is really important to us. But Mo just completely modernizing the library. So something we want to do is get rid of all of our current bookshelves and all of our current current furniture and have everything be mobile and flexible so that we can turn the library into different spaces. So what I mean by that is if all of our bookshelves are on wheels, we can just push them all against the wall and have like a presenter and have seating for those, have seating for people to watch the presenter. So we want it to be a pre presentation space. I want to put in like a, li a little library garden um, where kids can, you know, we can grow whatever. And then another thing that we're working on is the room off of the library, the library classroom, turning that into a mobile production studio. So having green screens, having cameras and iPads and, you know, like the best technology for mm -hmm. for that so that we can have students producing content at school, podcasts, news shows, um, whatever kids want to do, and that we are able to edit it. So we want to have, you know, like advanced software so that the editing can be done, and mm -hmm. we want this to be student-led too yeah. so that the students are, are the ones leading the efforts on that. And, um, yeah, so we have our plan, like a 3D rendering of what we want drawn. We've gotten a budget. And so now our goal is to spend the rest of the school year kind of fundraising and um, finalizing those plans. And then next summer, just getting all the new stuff in there. Yeah. yeah. I understand you've never skied. Do you have any plans <laughs> to learn? I know. I shouldn't have brought that to anyone's attention because I've been made fun of for it. But yes, I've never skied before in my life. Like I said, I'm from Iowa. There's nowhere to ski there. Very flat, very flat place. Um, so no, I've never skied, and I've only lived in Colorado for a couple years. So I'm t I took advantage of my ski pass that I was able to get through the school district. So I have a flex pass. I can go once a week. And my plan is to go to the ski swap and f find someone who can help me figure out what I need. Because I, like when I say I've never skied, I've never even seen someone ski. I've seen like photos. So I have no clue what to do. So <laughs> I'm going to go to the ski swap, try to find somebody to help me pick out my gear, I guess, with, what I call it, gear. Okay. <laughs> and then, like, bribe one of my friends to teach me. Um, people have told me I should also get, like, professional classes, which is probably a good idea because I don't want to go out there and really hurt myself. And I've mm -hmm. also been told to start at Buttermilk yes. and work my way. And, like, don't go to Highlands right away or something, yeah. which is good advice because I would not know. Mm -hmm. um, what is the best thing about working for Aspen Middle School's library? Oh, man. Um, 
there are so many good things. I mean, I love libraries and I feel very passionately about them. So being able to just be in a library pretty much all day is like the best job ever. But also being around every kid at school. So I think that's the big benefit to my position is that I get to meet and interact with literally every AMS student and every AMS teacher, which is a really unique opportunity because not everybody gets to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So it's really awesome that at any given time I have a group of fifth graders and then 30 minutes later I have a group of eighth graders and just being able to interact with all the kids. Will there be a Scholastic Book Fair this year and if so, when? Yes, so that reminds me I need to do some emails about that, but there will be a Scholastic Book Fair. It's either going to be during parent-teacher conferences or a little bit later, but probably still during parent-teacher conferences, so soon, the end of the month. Um, I just want to make sure I get, we ha you know, they do like the preview boxes. Yeah. I want to make sure every kid gets in there to make wish lists to take yeah. home to mom and dad and grandma and grandpa or whoever and can have their parents order them stuff. Yeah. But yes, to answer your question, there will be a book fair. Is there anything else you would like to share with us? About the library? Um, no, I'm just glad I got an opportunity to talk about our plan for the library revamp because I think people have heard that we want to do that, but there ha hasn't necessarily been a plan to do it. It's just been something that we've been talking about or that other people have been talking about. And so the fact that we have like an actual plan and now it's the design is kind of finalized and we can work towards um, getting them the fundraising mm -hmm. for it is really exciting. So, Haley, thank you so much for being on the show. Again, I am Edwin Ryerson and you've been watching the AMS TV show.